And God, I only praise the Lord once to get our knees. I want to, man, Lord, I want you to praise the Lord. Lord, I got to have you. I'm like that deer panting for the water, Lord. My soul longs for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You get hungry for the Lord. You get thirsty for the things of God. And it's truly a blessing. Praise the Lord. We say good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Welcome, House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. We're glad to see you this morning. And want to welcome all of our Facebook family that are with us this morning. I want to say praise the Lord. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center located in Smyrna, Tennessee. And we're just so glad that you have tuned in to be a part of this worship experience here at House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. We are Compassion and Action Ministry. House of Faith Christian Center, we have a threefold vision that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the center. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. House of Faith Christian Center, a minister of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. And thank you again for listening to a part, be a part of this worship experience through Facebook Live or being delayed. You listen to this through maybe YouTube or uh, some other uh, social media, but say welcome, welcome to House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. And we just join you to be a part of the saints, the men of God, the women of God that are here this morning because we just truly believe that God is not only to give us a word of God, but a word from God. It's going to be truly a blessing. So again, you want to go ahead and uh, hit like and hit share, hit like and hit share, and prepare to uh, get the word of God so you will get your pen and paper uh, and prepare to take some good copious notes and you'll get your Bibles out, your all printed tests, and get it on your phone, your iPhone, your iPod, your iPad, your iRon. Go and get the word of God. It's going to be so awesome this morning. And again, don't forget to contact your family members, your friends, associates, co-workers, uh, social media affiliates that have, contact them. And don't forget the family now, all right? Because you know who they are. Mama them, daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, Pookie them, Shaquita them, all the hymns, contact them. Let them know House of Faith Christian Center that we are on the air. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to what? Rejoice and to be glad in it. How many people are glad in the house today, huh? I am glad to be here one more time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so again, thank you again for being a part of the worship experience. Thank you for our praise and worship we had earlier. And again, if you watch this broadcast, we want you to invite and come worship with us at House of Faith Christian Center. We're located 2001 Mopo Boulevard, right off the Sam Ridley Parkway. And our uh, worship service begins every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m., preceded by corporate prayer at 8 30 a.m. And you want to come, and truly, you will be blessed in the Lord. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get right into this word. I want to tell you, praise the Lord. I First of all, if I get started, I want to tell you, listen, I need y'all to stop praying. I know you're doing it. Stop praying fervently for pastor because we're getting some things right now. We're getting very, very interesting. Praise the Lord. I tell you, uh, outside, not only things getting hot. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, this word is getting hot. It, listen, it stirring some folk up. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm getting cross eyes and things like that. And whatever people look at me funny. And I say, well, you know what? I must be making a mark. Praise the Lord. I'm hitting home. So again, it's no time to get scared. I just need you to stop praying. Praise the Lord. Uh, that God will continue to think through my mind and open up my vocal cords. That I may speak the word of God with boldness, with clarity, and understanding in the name of Jesus. Can you do that for me? Can you be praying for me? Praise the Lord. Because, Lord, we're going to hit some things tonight. I hear you. Some people are not going to be too happy, but that's okay. I am not here to make people happy. I'm here to talk about holiness for God. Hallelujah. You get holy with God. Happiness with God. <laughs> happiness without holy. Praise the Lord. You got a mess. But holiness with happiness, you on your way. All right? So y'all ready for the word of God this morning? Oh, it is going to get so good. So let's go ahead and get your Bibles out. Praise the Lord. Again, what you have on printed text, iPad, iPod, iPhone. Wherever the word of God is, again, don't get like and get share, get like and it share. But listen, you want to stay until every to the very end and get every word that's going to come out of the word of God. All right, so we do the same these words. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready to receive the dynamic. The powerful, the ever-increasing, 
changes. The life changes. The life changes. Word, of Word of God. My mind is alert. My, mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Is I boldly confess. I I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess. I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess. After hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. For thine is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power, and mine is the power. For thine is the glory, and mine is the glory. Forever, and ever, and ever. For this is my receiving day, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's go ahead and put our handouts right now in Jesus' name again. Praise the Lord. This is our year of God's amazing favor to you in 2022, celebrating 30 years of the gospel of God's grace. Again, taken from Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 from the New American Standard. It says, and Jesus kept on increasing in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Praise the Lord. We're going to get right into the subject. I got a whole lot I'm going to be saying today. And so, uh, again, the subject that we started a, a more of a little mini series the description, direction, and destruction of God's divine favor. And again, an introduction we stated and that throughout the Bible, uh, the repeated quest of God is from our obedience to Him. God really doesn't care about our good deeds or the talents we may exhibit professionally or socially. All God, listen, all God really wants for us is our obedience. Say this, all God, all God wants, for me wants for me is my obedience. It's my obedience. <laughs> That's it. See, he wants us to do what he says because acts of obedience, it proves our trust in him. Hmm. In fact, this faith and trust are the things that he admires most, the qualities he most passionately responds to, and they both stem from obedience. God is looking for trust, and he's looking for faith. And when we exhibit faith and trust, it shows we are obeying God. Now watch this. When we are not obeying God, listen to me now, when we are not obeying God, is showing we are not exhibiting faith and trust. Show me a person who is obeying God, and I'll show you a person who has faith and trust in God. Show me a person who does not disobey God, that's a person who's not putting their faith and trust in God. So therefore, listen, if we want an increase of faith in our lives, we must understand the description, we must follow direction, and we must beware of the destruction of God's divine favor. Now look at Psalms 5, verse 12. Psalms 5 and verse 12. Talk about this favor that we have. And Psalms 5, verse 12, the New King James Version says this. And we'll look at verse 11 too. Let's put it in verse 11. It says, But let all those who rejoice put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those who love your name be joyful in you. And verse 12 says, For you, now this is the this is Psalm of David. He's writing this to the people of God. He says, For you, O Lord, this, you will bless the righteous. How? With favor, you will surround them with a shield. And so we see that the righteousness of God, based on today what Jesus has done for us, not based on our good works, not based on our deeds, not based on our intentions. That doesn't make us righteous. What makes us righteous is when we put confidence and trust in what Jesus has done for us. Why? Because 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, And he who knew no sin became sin for us. Why? That we may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I don't do things to become righteous. When I'm righteous, I'll do good things. And when I do that, watch this, when I understand who I am, then therefore I now place myself in a position, listen, that favor, if I say favor, favor. listen, favor will surround me like a shield. Glory to God. You know, I I, 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 I enjoy comic characters and we should read some comic books, and, you know, before comic movies and things came out, you know, and one of the things that the, the comic characters, the heroes, they would have sometimes, they would have what they call a force seal. 
a force shield, and they would get inside, and that force shield would be all around them, and no matter what the enemy did, it couldn't get through. Why? Because they had a shield all around them. But I want to tell you, your Bible says, listen, when you understand that you have been blessed by the Lord, hallelujah, when you understand that, listen, you will rejoice, you, you understand you put your trust, you put your faith, you put your confidence, and you start obeying the Lord, then what happens is now it allows you to come under this shield called favor. Hallelujah. Say this, I'm sealed with favor. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It's like the old folks used to say, listen, over my head is a mighty shelter. Under my feet is a sure foundation. All around me is like a wall around Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. I'm covered high by a shield called favor. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So today I want to look uh, uh, at uh, uh, this last part of this three part called uh, the description, the direction and destruction of, of, of God's favor. Today I want to talk about the destruction of God's divine favor. Now when you look at that, you might say, what? My goodness? The destruction of God's favor? I mean, can God's favor be destroyed? What? So we're going to look at that. Praise the Lord. You know, and if you're curious, that's what I want to do. I want to get your curiosity stirred up. Hallelujah. So let's look at this right here. It says the destruction to God's divine favor. As follows our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is important to note that everything good we receive from God is by grace. James says over in James chapter 1, he says all and good and perfect gifts comes from down from above with the Father of lights and there is no shadow of turning of him. So every good gift I get, guess what? It comes down from God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, this means that God truly loves us and blesses us even though we don't deserve it. All right? So God, listen, he pours out grace. He pours out favor. He pours out blessings to us. But here's the thing about it. Although God pours it out and he extends it up, it's something else to be able to receive what he has poured out. I want you to see that. Because just because he pours it out doesn't automatically make it you're going to receive it. See, it's just like if I decide to give you a gift. Now I can give you a gift. All right? But guess what? It's not up to me whether or not you take it or not. <laughs> it's not up to me whether or not you receive it. Now, I can give it to you, all right? And listen, you can receive it or you can reject it. Now, just because you don't have it don't mean I didn't give it to you. <laughs> and so what we have to ask ourselves, is it possible? Is it possible that we serve the God of grace? We serve the God of favor? We serve the God of blessing? We serve God that wants to do everything for us? But it could be that, listen, we never receive the favor in our lives, and if we never receive it, then guess what? We are now destroying, listen, or being destructed to a divine favor. Now, it means we're destroying it for God's favor overall. It just means we're destroying it for us. It just means we've not received it. But people say, well, you know what, Pastor? I thought God is a respect of people. Yes. God is no respect of God, no respect of people, but he is respect of your faith. Let us say it again. God is not a respect of people, but he is a respect of your faith. He is a respect of your trust. He is a respect of your confidence. Watch this. And he is a respect of your obedience. And that's why you would take two individuals side by side, and from peripheral, it looks like they're just as equal. And, this, and they may say, oh, I'm a Christian. They may say, I believe in Jesus. And you see, one, that they walk in the favor of God. You see favor coming upon them. You see grace coming to them. You see blessing coming to them. And then this other vision, they're like, why does that happen to me? You know, I always say, you know, there's three types of people in the world. There's some people who, who watch things happen. There's some people who make things happen. And then there's some people who say, what happened? Why is it not happening to me? Why am I not receiving this faith? 
Praise be God. And I want to stop and tell you right now, praise the Lord, God again is no respecter of persons. Listen, I want to tell you something. This favor that we're talking about God, listen, it's not confined to a race. It's not confined to a gender. It's not confined to an age. It's not confined to a culture group. It's not even confined to a country. To a country. Because some people may be looking and say, well, you know, the favor of God is only in the United States and not anywhere. No, this favor of God, listen, is no respected person. It can go all over the world. Even in the remote parts. Hallelujah. We've got testimony of that. One of our sons in the ministry. It's maybe some 6,000 miles away. Six hours away. In Africa time. Back in the remote part of the Congo in Africa. Why, they don't have all the amenities that we have today. They don't have the movie theaters and they don't have all those things whatsoever. And I want to tell you, this brother, praise the Lord, is receiving favor of God. Hallelujah. Through the grace of God, God is just pouring out blessings upon him. Praise the Lord. He sees favor come all the time. So I want to tell you, favor is no respect of persons or country. Anybody is respect of your faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And so what I want to deal with it again, is there anything that we are doing to hindering or doing things to being destructive of the favor of God for our lives? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And thank God for the favor of God is working in other people's lives. And I praise God for that. And I thank for God. But guess what? I want the favor of God to come on my life. Don't you? Don't you? Amen? amen. Don't you? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I want to see favor working in my life every day in my life. Praise the Lord. And therefore, I want to expect and I anticipate this favor. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. So listen today. I want to look at four areas today that uh, it can be destructive of, of God's divine favor. Some things I like to say this, that, that, are, that we forfeit God's divine favor in our lives that we have. And, and listen, I'm watching, I'm preaching this broadcast, you're not just here to house of faith, but I'm listening to people who are watching this broadcast through Facebook Live, through YouTube, some delay. You gotta hear this word of God, praise Lord, especially if you're saying, well, I don't see the favor of God working in my life. Yeah, it seems like every time I walk around, I've got trouble and things over here, things are not working, and I can't understand this, and I'm trying to be a good person, I'm trying to do the right thing, but I just don't see this favor working past it. Well, praise the Lord, we're going to show you that's a possibility that these areas, you got some things going on in your life, and we want to address them. And you know what? Until we can get the healing, sometimes we got to get the cancer out. Woo! And many times to get the cancer out, something has to be cut. And being cut is not always feeling good. Hallelujah. So I want to look at four ways that a person can forfeit God's divine faith in life. Remember, God is no respect of persons, but he is respected of your faith, he's respected of your trust, and he's respected of your obedience that you have. All right. So number one, the first way a person can forfeit God's divine favor and allow it to be destructive, in other words, it's not working, is by seeking the wrong blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 11 to verse 13. Now, Jeremiah is one of the prophets of God, but he also was a priest. And Jeremiah basically prophesied or proclaimed the word of God to the southern kingdom of the nation of Israel called Judah. The nation of Israel had been divided up into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom consists of 10 tribes and the uh, capital of the northern kingdom was Samaria. The southern kingdom consisted of two tribes, and these were again tribes for the descendants of Jacob of Israel, was Benjamin and Judah. And the capital of Judah was Jerusalem. So Jeremiah basically preached and prophesied to 
the, the nation of Judah, the two southern kingdoms, the southern kingdom that they have. And Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. You say, why was he called the weeping prophet? It's because of his judgment that God gave to him to tell to the people. Although God loved the people, although God wanted the best for the people, but we're going to see whether well, people did not do what God wants them to do, and God pronounced judgment upon his own people. People say, well, I don't think God will keep mouth judgment. Well, you need to go back and read your Bible, even in the New Testament. Because the Bible says, over, I think in Peter, it says, <laughs> now judgment begins at the house of God. But I thought Jesus took our sins. Yeah, he did take all of our sins. He took all those sins that we have whatsoever, but there is something called sowing and reaping. Am I heard of that before? Yeah, he took my sins, but you know, if you continue to continue, continue to sow stuff, there's some reaping you're going to do. And listen, Jesus didn't bring it on you. He told you what not to do. But if people continue to do it, you will reap what you sow. That's a principle of God. And so we see the people of God. And, 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 you know, uh, God had, had been blessing these people. I'm talking about the, the, the kingdom of Judah, all of Israel. I mean, they've seen God move. They've seen that when God was down, well, listen, when they were down in Egypt, and God heard their cries after they'd been in bondage for 400 years, and God came and he brought them out of Egypt. They saw how God came and brought them to the Red Sea, and they didn't know what they were going to do. And they could hear chariots uh, coming behind them with Pharaohs. And they saw how Moses stood and hung up his rod, glory to God, and how that Red Sea began to split, and how the children of God went across the red on dry ground. And they saw that how the chariots came to chase them, and how an east wind came that it blew them back to come and now consume them. They saw God do all those things. They saw God send a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. They saw how God fed them with manna on high. Saw how God fed them with well. Saw how God was gave them water out of the rock. They saw how God allowed Moses to come down from the mountain with two tablets of stone to give them the Ten Commandments. They experienced the goodness of God. They saw how they came to the promised land. And even after Moses had died, they saw how Joshua was preparing them to get into the promised land. However, they saw how God sustained them for 40 years in the wilderness and how he protected them. They saw how, they saw how God raised up judges, military leaders, to be over them and to protect them. They saw how God, even God didn't want to do it, but they said, God, we want a king because we want to be like everybody else. They saw how God raised a young man by the name of Saul. And God raised a young man by the name of David. And God raised up a young man by the name of Saul. They saw God move. And God had been so good to them. God had given them grace. God had given them favor. God had given them blessing. And God has sustained them because of his love for them. Something happened. You tell what happened. They took the goodness of God for granted. They say, you know what? God's going to do that <coughs> to what we do. Hmm. It don't matter. We can just do what we want to do. When we get in trouble, we just run back to God, and God's going to take care of us. No problem. And we'll do this over and over again. So Jeremiah, God raised up Jeremiah the prophet to speak. To his own people. Now listen to what it says now. It says, has any nation ever traded its gods for new one? Even though they are not gods at all. Notice little small gods. Now what's a little small god? A god is anything that you worship. A god is anything that is an idol. That becomes your little chief. It not necessarily means a little statue you put in your house or whatever, but it means that which takes place, take precedent over the God of the universe, over Yahweh. And watch this. He says, yes, my people, everybody say my people. Everybody say again, my people. my people. So we know he's talking to the people of God. Now notice what he says. He says, yet my people 
have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. They see me do it. They see the miracles. They see me bring people through COVID. They see me sustain people through work, worse economic times, through layoffs. They see me do that. But still, my people, they have exchanged the glorious God, or we can say the God of glory, or the God of goodness, or the God of grace, or the God of favor. Listen, he says, they have exchanged this God for worthless idols. And well, I'm, I'm just reading y'all. He says this, the heavens are shocked. And such a thing, and shrink back in horror and dismay. They said, "Don't they realize what God has done for them? How God has blessed them? How God has sustained them? How God has taken care of them? And now they have exchanged the glories of God, the grace of God, the favor of God, the goodness of God for worthless idols." That's the Lord. Says the Lord. For my people, they said, my people. See, watch this. They've done two evil things. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how what you can do can block or destroy the favor of God working in a person's life. Two evils. Number one, they have abandoned me. <sighs> huh? Oh, we ain't abandoned God. Let's find out. They have abandoned me. Watch this. The fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that hold no water at all. Wow. And God says, Heaven is shocked. Now, I want to tell you something, my friends. When heaven gets shocked, that's pretty bad. When heaven sees everything God has done for people, and now they've exchanged the glory of God for idols. What is an idol? An idol is something that you put up in place of God. It's a substitute. And you're saying that, you know what? I'm gonna do this instead of worshiping God like I should. I'm busy. I don't have time. I've got activities I need to do. I'm tired. Long week. God understands. I got to take care of my family. And I like what it says is, is that no, they have been in God and this is the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked systems that hold no water at all. Now, over in Israel, and, and my sister can help me up, you know, and, and it's better now, but back then, you know, they have they had these big old pots that could hold the rain water that would come down. You know, it's not like they have the you know the system, plumbing system they have today, but back then, and they would put these big old pots. Underwater, because sometimes they have what they call the dry season, where they get a lot of rain to do that. And so they would have these big old pots that would hold the water that would come in. And what is water? You know, water, they use water to drink, they use water uh, to cook, uh, they use water to uh, run their businesses, they use water uh, to bathe, you know, they use water for everything that they had. Water was a necessity back then that they had. And they would have these cisterns or these big old bowls to hold the rainwater to come, you know, uh, to do it. Uh, some, some of y'all know what we're talking about. You're from the country, you know, you, you have what they call those big old <laughs> pots, you know, and you put it at the end of the house, whatever, and then that rainwater that would come down in there. And you did everything that rainwater did. Because water was very, very precious to them. And God says, this is what's happened. But there's a water that was better than that. It was water called the living water. And the living water flowed all the time. 
And then the literal bottom, what happens is it can save your life, it sustain your life, it refresh your life. Listen, it, 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 it did everything for you to happen. And, and, and so that little water, you can count on it was there all the time. The little water, it would flow, refreshing, which would happen. You know, and, uh, and but the, the, the other water that you had was good as long as the systems were working. But whenever there was a crack, <laughs> In the cistern or in the pot, that water would seep out and it cannot sustain you. And the person, people, listen, was at the mercy. They said, We have no water. Now, you had water, you just didn't have the right container to hold it. And God says, My people have substituted me, which is the living water, for a broken cistern. And I want to say this. They have substituted the living God or the kingdom of God for a broken system that does not work. And a broken system that does not work is when you're trying to make things happen on your own without God. It will not work. I don't care what it is. Uh, bring up uh, John 4 verse 10. I'm going to come back to this one. John verse 4, we're talking about this living water. This is what Jesus was, with. this is you, just break it down, this is not in your notes. Jesus was talking to the woman at the well because she wanted some water. She had nothing to draw with. And she, and she says, I want this water. And look what Jesus says. Jesus says, replied, if you only knew the gift of God has for you, who are speaking to you, ask me, if I say ask me, and I will give you this living water. Jesus says this little water flows from me. I want to give it to you. You can't get it by yourself. Your self-efforts will not do it. Trying to be good enough won't get the job done. Trying to do the best you can will not do the job. This living water only comes from me. And go back to Jeremiah chapter 2. And God says, you have made a substitute. You don't want Jesus anymore. You don't want the church anymore. You don't need the church anymore. You don't need the pastor anymore. You don't need the saints of God. You, you okay. Look around. Empty seats. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just preaching the gospel. You would think that when God got us through COVID, you would think when God allowed our church to be open again, you would think when God says, okay, come back to worship again, that our churches will be overflowed because people say, God, I thank you, you protected me. Stick around. I am just telling you. That people who say, you know what? Yeah. I think hopefully it'll work. I'm going to tell you, my friend, unless God in it, you won't win it. Let me say it again. Unless God is in it, you will not win it. But people say, Kobe, Kobe, well, Kobe, you know what? Every Sunday, when I come to worship service, I passed by the golf course. I says, where's Kobe? Every Sunday when I come, I pass by the park. I see people playing basketball, playing softball, having a good time. I'm not against having a good time. But listen, my friends, he says, my people, they have abandoned me. Men have abandoned the church. I don't need the church anymore. They don't say that, but in their accent. Yeah, when I was in trouble and, and I needed God, I went to God and I said, God, I need so much. But now I'm okay. I got a good job. I, I, I make good money. And it's so good now, before COVID, I was off on Sundays, but now since COVID, they want me to come to work when I need to be worshiping. 
I, like I said, I need y'all prayers because I'm saying some things here. People know it's the truth, and unless we tell them to be true, they will not get set free. It's amazing parents cannot take their ch children to children's church, but they can take them to ball games or tournaments on Sundays, out of town, spending hotel fees, restaurant fees, gas fees, all over, but they can't come to bring them on Sunday to get taught the word of God. I'm just saying, God says they have abandoned me. And they wonder why favor is not working their lives. Well, Pastor, watch this. Could they pray for me? Now, I want you to think about this. There's people who don't want to obey God, but they want you to pray for them. So what they're simply saying is, I want to substitute obeying God for you praying for me. And if you pray for me, guess what? Maybe things get better and I'll continue to do the same thing I'm doing. I don't want God, but I want the things God has to offer me. Somebody say amen. Amen. I want the favor of God, but not on God. And God says, to leave what you've done, you've abandoned the fountain of living water. That I wanted to flow. I wanted to sustain you. I wanted to save you. I wanted you to never be dry, never be parched. Because when living water, it grows things. That's what I want from you. I want me in you. But you've exchanged that. You don't want me. You just want the stuff I give you. And those things I call broken systems. Yeah. And they will not hold. And my thing is, my friends, I love you, but don't wait until it's too late. You know, the worst time to sow corn is when you need corn. The worst time to sow tomato seeds is when you need tomatoes. The worst time to sow prayer is when you're in a desperate need, you need prayer. Well, people should pray, yes. But I'm saying, you can't abandon God. And that will stop the favor of God. And God said, you don't want me? You don't have time for me? You're busy? Take care of this and take care of that? So what's my remedy? It goes back to what Mr. Camille said earlier. Let's go back to worship. It goes back to the heart. God, I just don't want the stuff. God, I want you. And God, my heart goes out for you. And when we have a heart that, that, that's sincere and, and, and consecrated to the things of God, God says, that's what I'm looking for my people. And now you're ready for my favor. But you think you're just going to use me? God says that's a broken system. And it will not work. And it will not sustain you. And that's where we live in another country now. When all the stuff is going on. Why is it happening? Why is it happening? Here it is. We have abandoned God for a broken system. When I just go to school and get an education, there's nothing wrong with getting an education. I'm a proponent of education. But when you abandon God for education, when you're too busy to worship God because you've got to study, oh God, I get to the late when I get my degree. Okay, you got to be a degree. Oh God, I get to late when I get my master's. Okay, God, I get to late when I get my PhD. Well, God, I'm busy. I said, okay. You've abandoned me for a broken system. Watch this, this is going to hurt a lot of people. God, I have to work. Listen, God wants us to work. Working is a good thing. But when you substitute abandoning God for your work, you simply say, God, I got a better way of doing this thing. God, I know I need to be in worship service. I know I need to be with my saints and brothers. And I know I need to be praising God with them. But you see, you see God, 
you know, they got this thing called overtime, they got this thing called triple time, you know, God, I got to pay my bills, and God, I got to pay this off, and I got to buy a big car, and a bigger house, and more clothes, and, and God, you, 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 you understand, so God says, yeah, I understand. He said, I was still there with you when you didn't have all this stuff. I was there with you. I love you when you didn't have all of that. But now you have abandoned me for stuff. It's a broken system that we have. You know, again, we was a, my wife and I, were, you know, with, with two children. You know, Josh was in athletics and he was a soccer player. He was a good soccer player. And uh, uh, he played for school, he played for leagues and different things. And we would tell the coach. Now he can play all night Friday. And he can play all they said. But on Sunday morning, he's going to be in church service. Well, we got this big tournament come, and what are we, what are we in a championship game? Well, you'll be in a championship game, I was going to play. Now, you want to have it after service, after church service, we'll make some arrangements. But he's not going to miss church to, to kick a ball, or to hit a ball, or to shoot a basket. Because we're going to teach him to abandon God. It was God who blessed us to bring him into this world. It was God who blessed us to sustain him. It was God who blessed us to take care of him and to raise him. And now we're going to abandon you, abandon you God, to hit a ball or to kick a ball or to shoot a basket. I don't know if you, but we, growing up, we just didn't do that on Sunday morning. And and and, and we would go, we would go to the park. Mom is telling now, let you go to church, so you ain't going to the park. I probably know we're a new generation now, Pat. We're a new generation. We just didn't do it. Because mom and daddy want us to abandon God for a broken system that would not hold us. Because of that, all four of us children, mom and daddy children, are now in ministry. Our son is in ministry. I'm not bragging, son. I'm just simply saying, we just may say we're not going to abandon God. And we would, I would tell parents, if you can take your child to a ball game on Sunday morning, you can bring them to church on Sunday morning. And you get enough parents together and say, you know what? We just won't play on Sunday morning. Guess what happened? They'll start having a ball game. But when Christians are missing church and worship service to play ball, to hope they make it to, quote, the big league, because they can buy you a new house because you get old, I'm going to teach the truth, praise the Lord, to take care of you. Broken system. Well, thank you for enthusiasm. Number two. <laughs> See, that's the thing one other does each. I'm just saying what the Lord said. God says you're bad. <laughs> Number two. The second way to forfeit God's divine favor in your life is by losing focus of your true purpose. Look at James chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 3. Now James is writing this to a Christian. He's writing to, to the church. This is basically the, the half brother of Jesus who was right under Jesus growing up in the family and, and during the time of Jesus' ministry growing up. He really didn't believe in Jesus that he was a Messiah. But they got the revelation that who he was. And so now he becomes one of the leaders, one of the pillars in the local church. This is James. And he's right, he's a Christian. This is what he says. He says, what is causing a quarrel and fights among you? You mean people fighting in church? All right? So you won't see the biggest fight. You don't have to go to the UCF and all that. Boxing matches and WWE and all that. You won't see some stuff. There it is. He says, don't they come from evil desires and war within you? So when people want to fight you, what they're really is fighting themselves. Ooh, this is so good. He talking about Christian. Stuff going on within you, and therefore you got to get it out, so now you need somebody to, to, to throw it out to somebody. So he says, what cause and fight among you? Don't you think come from either side within you? He says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are, what? Now he's not writing out just to the world. He's writing it to church. He says, you are jealous of what others have, 
but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. See, when people get blessed, I suffer with them. I said, praise the Lord, glory to God. They get them blessed, I said, praise the Lord, glory to God. I said, is that new suit you got on? I said, you wearing that suit real, real good. Is that a new hairdo? Oh my goodness, that looks nice. You got a new house? Oh, praise the Lord. When you have your house warm and part, I want to come and soak some into it. When people who are jealous, <laughs> you know, well, Pastor, you just talk about my whole family. I don't know your family. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, when I didn't have anything, they were okay, but now since God blessed so far now, they don't even want to invite me over for dinner. I wonder why. He says that, yet you don't have, watch this, he says, yet you don't have because you don't ask God for it. And verse 3, and even when you ask, you don't get, now watch this now, God, I want favor, God, I want blessing, God, I want grace, watch this, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong, you only want what will give you pleasure. Now, let, let me tell you, my friends, grace is free, but it's not cheap. And there's a reason why God wants to restore grace upon you, not for you just to get you a bigger house or a bigger car or more money in your bank account. That's not the, that's not the purpose of grace. The purpose of grace is to glorify God. Now listen why I got this here. It says we must understand that God loves all his children. However, he does not treat all of us the same. You got children, you have, a, you have more children, more, you love all of them, but sometimes you do treat all of them the same. Yes, I did, you lying. You got two children, and one cleaned up the room, and one didn't clean up the room, and you told me you blessed both of them? Thank you. No, you don't. So I got, I got to show this thing because people are mad at God because they don't see favor working at God. God will not continue to lavish us with his favor when we continue in sin because he does not want us to remain in sin. When we really want God's favor, listen, we must ask ourselves, why do I really want to be blessed? When we ask God bless our efforts to glorify him, we will have his favor because it is God's purpose for our lives. Let me say there's two things, the reason why Jesus performed miracles to people's lives. But really three. One is to glorify God. And the second one was for people to follow him. And the third, if they didn't follow him, was to go back and tell other people how good God has been to them. Three things. Glorify God, number one. Number two, follow him. Or number three, go back and tell their family and friends how God has blessed them. I want you to think about the next time somebody asks you to pray for them, why they want God to come to that prayer. Is it to glorify God? Is it to follow Jesus? Or is it to go back and tell people how good God it is? No! It's for selfish reasons. Why? Because I've seen it over and over again. I, Pastor, you just pray for me. And, and, and Pastor, I, I, you, God come through. I'll be in church, Father. You, you tell me, Pastor. I'll be there. I said, okay, I'll pray for him. And God come through. And I look for him. Look out the door for him. I call them on the phone. I go by the house, they don't answer the door. And then I run into them. I say, what have you? Uh, well, you, 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 see, 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 pastor, uh, 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 some things came up. I said, the thing didn't come up when you asked me to pray for you? See, we, can we get real up in here? You know, and I, I, I love people, but I'm asking people why you want me to pray for you. Do you just want to pray for so you can use God? Or they're going to be praying for you. So when God comes through, you'll glorify God. Or you'll say, you know what? I'm going to get myself together and I'm going to start worshiping God. I'm going to be a more obedient God. I'm going to start praising God more. I'm going to glorify God. Or I'll start telling people, look at God did. 
Instead of, yeah, yeah, God came through, you know, but you know what? Hey, this is what I did. God, God came through because I'm all this. And James says, people only want to give, they want some God to give their pleasure. And that's not what grace is all about. That's not what favor is all about. Favor is all about God, not about you. I told y'all this message won't be popping. <laughs> oh, Pastor, yeah, when God bless you, you'll see me in church on Sunday. <laughs> oh, Pastor, yeah, yeah, I pray for God to give me off on weekend, Pastor. When I get my weekend, I'll be in church on Sunday. And wonder why they don't see the favor of God consistently in the message. Because selfish is out. Listen, my friends, the world or the world system is dominated by selfishness. That's the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God is dominated by love. And you got two systems working. And I'm going to be motivated by love of God, or I'm going to be motivated by selfishness. And in God, there's no I. In God, there's no me. It's only him. And God, as you bless me, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to praise you. God, I'll do this. So how do I keep it up? It's going back again. Worship. And being thankful. Did you know it's very difficult to be thankful to God and be selfish? It's, if you make it do it, it'll be very, very hard. God, I'm just grateful for what you do for me. God, I'm grateful, I'm thankful for all that you are, God. And when you do that, my friends, what happens is all that selfishness, all that envy, all that evil desire starts coming out of you, and now you focus on him, and you have what I call an attitude of gratitude. See, evil desire doesn't necessarily mean you're out there shooting people, killing people. Evil desire is that, listen, you make idols, you put God aside, and now you become the God of your life. And you do what you think instead of what the word says. Number three. I'm just talking about what can hinder the favor of God working in people's lives. Why they don't see it working on a consistent basis. I gotta expect his favor. And so God, whatever it takes, that's what I'm willing to do. Number three, by staying in sin and refusing to repent. Now I didn't say commit a sin, I say stand in sin. There's a difference between committing a sin and staying in sin. Because we live in a fleshly body. And we do things we shouldn't do. I understand that. But I'm talking about the first thing you need to do is you need to go repent. That's why God that calls David a man after God's own heart. I mean, how can a man commit adultery and murder and still be called a man after God's own heart? How can that happen? Why? Because he was quick to repent. He did not make excuses for his actions. He even said, God, he wouldn't pray to God. He said, listen, remove this sin from me. Give me a clean heart. Renew me a right spirit so I worship you, God. And God honored that. He never said, well, you know, everybody don't see him. You know, everybody gonna do a little bit. Who you think you are coming to me, Nathan? Tell me about my stuff. Who you think you are? You need to get your house together. You, you, you mind your own business. You know, I, I do what I want to do. He didn't do it. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. But so move on. I'm strong up here. I want to see the favor of God working on life. See the family blessed, the, 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 the friend blessed. You start seeing the finances blessed, the body blessed, healed, delivered. Oh man. Favor of God. Take the favor of God. He said, Oh gosh, he understands. He just put up here. When I get ready, I, one, of these day, one of these days, I get ready, I'll get it together. He says, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No. He's been patient for your sake. He does not, listen to this, he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. 
And see, when you don't have the faith of God working into your life, when you don't see faith of God, you are susceptible to the world. And the devil can do with you whatever he wants to do. But when you have that seal of favor on you, he comes to you, and as long as you stand up in favor, a seal of favor, of love, he can't touch you. So God is simply saying, says, he doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. But he says, listen, everyone needs to repent. And repent doesn't mean I'm doing the best I can. Repent means, listen, I'm changing my will, I'm changing my mind, I'm changing my attitude, and I was going in one direction, and now I see my ways, and now I change and go into a different direction. Back to God. I, I'm now to the point where people have to pray for them and say, have you repented unto God? I'm asking. Well, no. I said, why do you want me to pray for you? Well, you see, I need my healing. Well, God wants you to be healed, but he wants you to get the healer instead of just the healing. He wants you to get the blesser instead of just the blessing. And to get the blesser, you've got to go back to him and repent unto God. And people don't want to hear about repentance anymore. They say it's old fashioned. I don't want to hear about repentance anymore. I want to do what I want to do. I, I got to say this, you know, and I, like I said, I'm, I'm out there now. I'm saying things now. Praise the Lord, glory God. Hallelujah. I'm just out of God. I'm just out of God. God, please tell me, please. Uh, this month, the month of June, has been designated, quote, by our society as Pride Month. Now before, before you turn me off, start writing a little nasty emails and so forth and all, let me explain. Now you just against people. I'm not against anybody. I'm just preaching the word. This has been called, quote, Pride Month. To elevate a certain group of people who lifestyle is against God, Romans chapter one, read it. Not the people, the lifestyle is against God, is detrimental to what God says. And God read Romans, just y'all read Romans chapter one, read it, read it, and then you tell me whether you're gonna celebrate Pride Month or not. And uh, putting pressure on people says, Oh, you gotta celebrate Pride Month, celebrate a lifestyle that's against God. Not people, a lifestyle that's against God. You celebrate it. And in the National uh, Major League Baseball, they say we will celebrate, uh, quote, Pride Month, and we wear these patches on our uniforms that say that we are in accordance with Pride Month. And I'm thankful to God that was a group of players that played for the Tampa Bay is it Tampa Bay Rays? Not the Tampa Bay, I think they call it Tampa Bay Rays. Who says, no, we're not gonna wear it. We're not gonna wear a emblem on our uniform. Not that we're against people, we're not against anybody. But we're not gonna support a system that's against God. And we're not wearing it on our uniforms. And there was about 10 players that says, we're not gonna do it. The whole league says, no, no, you got to recognize this particular month for Pride Month because of certain people that lifestyle. They said, no. Now we'll play ball and we'll do that, but we will not elevate a sin lifestyle that God talks about because we're not going to abandon our God for a broken system. I know it's not proper, but somebody got to stand factually and tell people the truth. In love. What do people need to do? Repent unto God. That they need to do. Hallelujah. Listen. It says that there are always consequences for our sins when we disobey God. The Bible is very clear that there is literally nothing that can outweigh the grace of God for those who receive it by faith and repent of their sins. However, if you're still, quote, stuck in sin and you start repenting, you are forfeiting God's favor and grace in your life. So the one thing to commit a sin is to be stuck in sin and make excuses for it and they get mad at people because they don't agree with your sin and call them old fogey or out of date or insensitive. 
I'm sensitive to people, but not sensitive to sin. It was sin that put Jesus at the cross and died for the sins of the world. And why not want to clean a lifestyle that Jesus went to the cross to die for? And America is now receiving the judgment. This is all in the hit job. We say we want to. All this stuff is going on there. Why, why? I'll tell you, we're being judged because of our sin. And we got to let our politicians, we got to know our leaders, know that listen, listen, we love people, but we will not be a person who promotes sin. We cannot do it. And guess what? When Jeremiah preached this message, guess what? He got ostracized. He got forsaken. He got abandoned. And they put him in prison to shut him up. But he said, I will not shut up! Because my God has been too good for me. And then the last one from close up. Hallelujah. Number four. Here's the fourth thing that will destroy the grace of God for your life is by neglecting God's presence. We will dance in your presence, sing hallelujah. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. And people who love God, they want to be with God's presence. They do. But people who have anything God, they don't want to talk about God. They don't want to talk about them. They don't want to talk about everything else about the presence of God. He says there's basically two ways to phrase God's presence. If I say God's presence, God's presence. it's used in the Bible. First, there's God's omnipresence, which means that God is everywhere. God is everywhere. All right? Look in uh, Psalms 139, verse 7, verse 8. God's, in a sense, he is everywhere. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He says this. He, David says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. He says, if I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. He says, God, in a sense, you are everywhere. I understand that. That's one type of presence. But I'm talking about something, another type of presence. Hallelujah. He says, glory to God. He says, however, just because God is everywhere does not mean we always experience and enjoy his presence. Now, how do you enjoy God's presence in hell? Well, God's presence, he ain't there, but he ain't enjoying it. You try to pull out the flame. <laughs> Some of y'all get that in a minute. Just because God is everywhere does not mean we our experience is joy and judgment. He says, but then there is God's manifest. If I say manifest presence. Manifest. See, I want his manifest presence. I want his presence to show up in my life. Hallelujah. He says, to truly experience the favor of God in your life, you must seek God's presence. God is always there, but do we not always recognize him or pay attention to him? And we must, we will miss out the joy that only his presence can bring. I know in God's presence because joy shows up. You can come to church and go get God's presence. Why? Because you're mad. I was that preacher go ahead and sit down somewhere. I'm tired of hearing him. That ain't God's presence. That's the devil. <laughs> What's what the, you say that on, 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 on water boy? Catholic major saying that every time the water goes up that, you know, that, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna pull it out, Psalm 1611. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I want to tell you, I approve this message I just preached it. And I'm gonna stand by. So how we gotta boost this message, we're gonna boost it every about. Praise the Lord. Because people gotta hear why things are not working. They gotta heal about all the violence that's going on. Gotta heal about all the killings and all the things, the evil things that take. They gotta understand there's a reason why. They're not being covered by the famous shield of God. But the Bible says over this, he says, but when he says, but when there was dark, when there was darkness, Egypt, he says there was light in Goshen. <laughs> God always have a remnant of people that he's gonna protect, even when evil is all around you. And then I don't care how high gas prices get. I don't care how food shortage is. I don't care about what the economy says. I don't care what it says in the recession. It don't matter. When you're in God's presence, God will take care because his word says, I will supply all your need. According to my riches and glory. Amen. Amen. So I don't get caught up in the six o'clock and ten o'clock bad news. I don't get caught up in that. I just have a faith of God. Because I want to be in his presence. Why? Look what he says. 
For he says, so you will show me the path of life. What is life all about? It's not just getting a job. It's not just getting some money. It's not just making a family. It's not just buying a house. It's not getting a car. No, the path of life is it. He says, in your presence. Hallelujah. There is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasures. Hallelujah. And when the presence of God is there, I can feel the presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in his atmosphere. He's here. The joy of the Lord is here. The faith of God is here. The grace of God is here. The presence of God is here. It's a fountain of living water. Yes. Glory to God. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's a lot of things I'm going to say. I'm going to say it for Wednesday night. I want to tell you, we got to get this message. The God of favor wants to favor our lives. But there's a thing that we can hinder it from keeping it from working. We got to let the other Christians know do you want the favor of God or not? Well, yeah, we got to get God. Because in this presence, you'll get the pleasures. So when I invite you to say you need to come be the presence of God corporately, with other saints of God, don't get an attitude, don't get mad. And I can just stay at home and worship the Lord. I don't need to go to church. I'm going to show you some scriptures. Well, that, 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 that's, that's not of God. That is nowhere of God. It says you can just stay at home and forsake the assembly of being your brothers and sisters and expect the favor of God work in life. That's not Bible at all. You know people today in your life, you know that the presence of God is not there. That's why all the stuff, the tragedy, the fear, the worry, the doubt. Because in the presence of God, you don't have fear. What you gonna fear? He said, the Lord, my, he said, the Lord, the light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a spirit of life. Who shall be afraid? Why? The presence of God takes care of that. The faith of God is a shield. Doubt, unbelief, please. It won't touch you. Why? Because you got the favor of God. Let's take our prayer for me. Now let's take our five confessions regarding forfeit God's divine favor. I'm going to say this. I confess, I confess that, I that I receive everything, everything good, from God, good from God. And I will not forfeit, not forfeit God's divine favor God's divine for my life. For my life. Number two, so I, confess I confess that I will not forfeit, will not forfeit God's, divine favor God's divine favor by seeking things, by seeking things that are broken, that are Broken, worthless, worthless, and not from God. Not from God. Number three, I, I, confess, I confess I will not forfeit, will not forfeit God's divine favor by losing focus on my true purpose in life. Number four, so I confess I will not forfeit God's divine favor by staying in sin and refusing to repent of my sins. Number five, so I confess that I will not forfeit God's divine favor by neglecting his presence. Let's take our prayer for me and be ready to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I receive everything good from you and I will not forfeit your divine favor for my life. I will not forfeit your divine favor by seeking things that are broken, worthless, and not from you. By losing focus on my true purpose in my life, by staying in sin and refusing to repent of my sins, and by neglecting your presence, I now realize because I'm favored by you, by faith, I receive your amazing favor in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We listen, we said, my friends, y'all may be seated. Everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith. And my evidence of my faith is when I obey God. If I'm not obeying God, I'm not operating faith. Remember, the Bible says without faith is possible to please God. How do I show my faith? I obey God. My friends, you're watching this broadcast right here, and you're saying, you know, a pastor, you preach a powerful message, and uh, 
I want favor in my life. My question to you, my friends, are you willing to obey God? First of all, you need to come to Jesus. You need to say, Jesus, I want you Lord of my life. I'm gonna repent of every sin I've committed. And, and, and I believe you, Jesus, that you was raised from the dead and you live. Now I want you to live inside of me because when you live inside of me, I know I have a favor. So my friend, you watch this broadcast, you never ever gave Jesus your entire life. I didn't say you're a bad person. I didn't say every now and then you pray or whatever. I'm saying, is Jesus Lord of your life? And if you're not doing that, then you need to go receive him. How you do that? Pastor, very good. ABC, number one, admit that you're a sinner and you deserve to die in your sin. B says you must be believe Jesus died on the cross for your sin and repent of every sin you committed. And C says, you must be willing to confess him as your Lord. You do the baby C's, guess what? You're in the kingdom of God. And now, you are now in position to receive the favor of God within your life. So if you've never done that, my friends, listen, you can just say that prayer right now, A, B, C. I admit, I believe, and I confess. Jesus, Lord, be here in here my life. I want to serve you, I want to follow you. Not just for what I can get, but I want to follow you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you just done that, I want to be the first one to say congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Wow. Listen, I want to tell you, the, the message I preached was not a message, uh, really a message of total, total judgment. It's really a message of victory. Because you can receive it. Remember, hey, things are going on it's not because God is judging you. It's because you're reaping what you're sowing. But that's the great thing about favor. See, favor can stop all of that. Favor can intervene on your behalf, but you got to be willing to obey God. Simple as that. Some of you listen to our kids. You say, well, yeah, I gave my life to Jesus, but you see, a lot of stuff's coming up. And see, I really don't have time to get together with, you know, those Christians and what it is. I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing all right. Everything's good. You know, good family, good home, good job, money. Everything's all right. I, I, I don't have any time for the church. But you're saying you have no time for God. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says the fool, now listen to me now, the fool has said in his heart there's no God. What does that mean? It don't mean God is it. It means I'm not willing to follow God. I got a better way. My broken systems is better than God's system. Believer, you want to become a belonger. You need to become belonging to a local church. There's a number on the screen that you can call that number, leave your name, leave a brief message, email address, phone number. We'll give any contact with you and show you the steps how you can belong to the local church. If you're going to be a believer, you need to belong. And you're not a belonger and you hear this word, you say, you know what? I don't want it. That's your, that's your choice. But don't blame God. <laughs> Start obeying and trusting God. Be a part of this local church. You need a pastor. You need other men and women of God, saints of God to do it. And then, you know, I'm going to pray. Yeah, I'm going to pray for y'all, right? What am I praying? I'm going to pray that you're going to obey God, give your life to Jesus, and be a part of a local church. That's what I'm going to pray for. And I want the healer. Hey, he's the healer. But do you want them? Jesus' name, hallelujah. So, yeah, those things. But listen, I hope you enjoy the message. I want you to like and share the message. Like and share. Praise the Lord. That's my heart. Listen, I love you, and I want the best of God in your life. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, listen. Woo, my, 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 my. Oh, glory. God, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for this. Woo! I'm telling you, they're going to get hot up in here. <laughs> you're going to start getting hot up in here. And you're going to decide, I'm on the Lord's side of now. And Jeremiah had to deal with family issues. That's some family members didn't like him. Why? Because he spoke the truth. And I'm not going to say everybody's going to agree with you. Everybody's going to like you. But it's not going to be family that's going to set me free. What's going to set me free? The truth. That's what Jesus said. So, you stand the truth, you're going to be okay. Amen? Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to continue on. The worship of the Lord is now an opportunity for prosperity. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you're an opportunity for the Lord, raise your hand. We'll come and give you one of this. And uh, listen, there's no way possible we can pay for that word you just heard. But it is life-changing. It really is. And uh, so, but you can't say, Lord, I give you thanks for the word. And so here at House of Faith Christian Center, listen, we love to give. We love to give the Lord's money. It blesses so much. And you know what we do? You say, why do we give? I can't say we obey God. 
When God tells us to give, we give. We don't argue with God and make excuses with God. No, we give because God says give. And we give not because we have to give. We give because we want to give. And you can be a part of this giving uh, system that we're in. It's called sowing and reaping. Praise the Lord. You, can, you give. Hey, give comes to you. Good measure. Break down. Shake together. Run it over. And guess what? You have three ways of how you participate in this offertory period. Turn it over. You get through text giving. You have information from that. Download that app. Put text giving. Follow the instructions. Get that. Second, you give one of the most popular ways you give is online giving. You go to houseofaithchristiancenter.org, houseofaithchristiancenter.org. Follow the instructions where it says donate and give. And give as God has blessed us, as God has told you to give. Obey God. That's all I'm saying. Obey God. So you can do that. So again, since you can do that. But the third way you can do is through chips and money orders. You can go give through House of Faith Christian Center, Post Office Box 985, Post Office Box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee. And uh, you can just give there. Praise the Lord. The Lord has blessed you to do that. So remember, the offering that leaves your hand, it never leaves the earth. And you're sowing good seed on good ground. Why? Because we preach favor. We want favor for your life, favor in your family, favor in your home, favor in your finances, favor in your body, favor in your relationship, favor in your peace, favor in everything you do. We want favor of God to come in life. So we give God thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So listen, we're going to go ahead and open up our altar right now. Hold on. We're going to pray right now for you. You hold up your altar that you have to give. You've got an opportunity to give to do that as well. You don't have to be a member of House of Faith Preacher. So you just simply say, we believe in a vision, preacher, that you're preaching the word of God, that you're not free that you'll stand flat footed and tell people, thus saith the Lord in love to do that. Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to give. We love and honor you, Father God. We praise you. We bless your name. Thank you, Father God. Not because we have to give. We give because we get to give. And it's a wonderful to be able to sow into the kingdom of God. And we thank you, Father God. We stand firm on your favor. But Father God, we will never abandon you. We will never exchange the living water for broken systems that do not work. Your word works. Yes, Your favor works. Yes. Your ways work. And we stand on that. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We love and honor you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. But thank you so kindly for giving. We appreciate that. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to sow. Well, listen, we've had an awesome time here at House of Faith Christian Center. I want to thank you again for taking out your busy schedule for being a part of this worship experience at House of Faith Christian Center. Again, we're located at 2001 Mapo Boulevard in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. See what? Smyrna, Tennessee. Oh, about 25 miles southeast of Nashville that you have. Praise the Lord. But uh, we're glad to be here. And uh, we just love God and we love people. We love you. And thank you again for listening to this broadcast. And again, want you to like it and share and tell people again about the great things God is doing. We come on every Sunday morning at this time, 9 30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And to our brothers and sisters over in the Congo, it's at 3 30 p.m. And we just love all of you so very well. So again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor House of Faith Christian Center. House of Faith Christian Center, we have a threefold vision that is to exalt the Savior. Equip the saints and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. House of Faith Christian Center, we are a minister of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. I want to leave you again these familiar words. Remember Jesus, Lord, and continue to show compassion in your action. And we'll see you next time. God bless you and have a great day.